um i honestly cringe when people say suicide is selfish because at that moment you're making it about you and that situation probably had nothing to do with you hey guys it's jasmine lee here um today i wanted to talk to you guys about a little bit of a heavy topic so it's just a trigger warning if you're sensitive to topics like depression suicide and anything of that nature please click off of this video i don't want to send anybody into a spiral but this video is going to be encouraging um i hope and it's really just meant to shed light. So if you feel strong enough, please continue watching. Um, if you don't feel strong enough, please click off the video. I may say something that sets you off and I really don't wanna do that. I never intended on making a video like this. What inspired me to make this video today was a Facebook status that I saw earlier this morning and it basically said, had your suicide attempt been successful, how many years would it have been since your death? Now obviously that's something very dark and deep to like open your morning with but uh, there's a few different things that happened after I saw this status. Um, I was like kind of like wow okay and I gave it a thought. I thought about mine and kept it moving then I get on YouTube and I see um, Logic's song featuring uh, Khaled and Alicia Cara with the suicide hotline prevention phone number and I see that music video and I saw a couple different things just upon waking up this morning that thrust suicide prevention in my face. So here we are. My own personal answer to that question would have been four years ago. Um, I've contemplated countless times but an attempt was only made once. I'm going to get into that toward the end of the video but I do want to keep this on track in terms of being encouraging. If you're feeling hopeless and you're feeling depressed or you're feeling suicidal, please make sure that you lean on somebody. It's hard to remind yourself in those dark spaces that people love you and that people care. But people do love you and people do care. Your absence will be noticed and you will be missed even though it may not feel like it. Um, as humans and especially in America, we take each other for granted and it's very easy to do because we just have so much going on around us that it's easy to just forget to tell somebody you love them or you appreciate them or you may not have liked them one day but you love them. That's something I think like the reason I'm I'm so good with the duality of human beings is because of my mother. Um, oftentimes I would do things that like really irked her soul and she wanted to be done with me often but she always would say like I don't like you but I love you you know and granted that hurt me growing up it's not like you want to hear it at all but I think that because she would say it so often when she got angry that's not and that's literally the only thing she knew how to say like i'm still seeing her being mad and saying that and it didn't make sense but her being able to say that alone just helped so if there's any parents who are frustrated with their kid but can kind of sense that the kid is slipping away tell them you know like you may not like their actions i would say I wouldn't say say you don't like them, but say you don't like what they're doing, but that you love who they are. Um, let them know that you see the core of them, that you know their heart and that you understand them, but you need them to like straighten up. I would say if you're being bullied, um, try to stick up for yourself. I know it's scary and I know it's hard, but I've had maybe three instances that I can remember where I had to stand up for myself and um two out of the three times I was afraid so one instance was in well two instances were in middle school so one instance was when I first moved here there was a girl who didn't like me because her boyfriend did like me but I didn't even know the guy was her boyfriend I was like brand spanking new to school and of course I'm talking to him because he's just friendly and he was kind he wasn't like pressing up or nothing we're still kids at this age so it was just like it was seventh grade and I had just moved to Baltimore I didn't know anybody and he was cute and he was funny and he was just he was kind he was so kind and so warm and um his girlfriend found out I guess I don't really know something happened she found out and decided she was gonna make my life a living hell and was teasing me and you know all kind of stuff so one day we get off the bus and she wanted to fight 
and her and her friend actually and it sucked because it was like two against one and I knew I couldn't run home that was just pride but um I basically I did fight her and the friend was also in it it was just a fight you know what I mean like everyone threw punches I got hit in my eye so I did have a black eye but I did like yank somebody's hair and I you know left a few scratches on people and uh, banged a few people up as well. I don't think I blacked eyes, but I definitely had a black eye. <laughs> um, but I fought. I was proud of myself for just trying to stand up for myself. Um, because going home and running in that situation wouldn't have really done anything. They didn't really mess with me anymore, but there's more to that story. Another instance that happened in middle school, this was eighth grade at a different middle school. No, I did not switch because I was bullied. I switched because we moved neighborhoods. But um, in eighth grade, there was a girl who would like hit me and she was always hitting me. Like every time she saw me, like there was times where she mind her business, but it was too many times. Like it was enough to count on one hand for her hitting me. And that was already one time too many. But back then I was a lot more afraid of confrontation. So when she would hit me, I would just eat it. It, it hurt, it hurt like hell, but it wasn't like a, like I didn't need to cry. I grew up around boys and fought all the time. You know what I mean? So that wasn't what it was about. It was just like, why the fuck are you touching me when I'm not doing anything to you? So I did end up, um, we had a lot of classes together as well, so that didn't help. But I basically went out in the hallway with her and, well, I asked her if she would come out in the hallway and talk to me because we had like a substitute that day. So I just felt like that was the best time to handle things. Um, so we went out in the hallway and I asked her like, why do you keep hitting me? I was like, I don't know how much more I can let that slide. So I need you to keep your hands to yourself. And I said that just like that. And she kind of like she was by herself at first so by herself she was very she was one of those girls who's like kind of vulnerable and don't really rustle feathers until she get around her friends and i don't respect people like that like keep that same energy whether you with your homies or alone and we could rock from there but anyway her friends came out to the hallway had my temperament been different um and a lot more prideful i probably would have been in a fight that day too but I basically let them know like this has nothing to do with you guys and I was very polite I'm a diplomat at heart so I was just letting them know like this has nothing to do with you guys this is between me and her and we're gonna handle it between me and her you know what I mean like I didn't want to fight her I just wanted her to stop putting her hands on me so that's what I mean when I say you got to teach people how to treat you and you have to assert yourself like my mother grew up thinking because a lot of the times I wouldn't say nothing but my mother grew up thinking that I was a mousy kid and I wasn't. I just think my tolerance levels are higher for certain things. But I know now that putting your hands on anybody should not be tolerated as many times as I tolerated it. I've had guns held to my head as a play, like as a joke by um, like my friends, my ex-friend's brother, like all kind of crazy stuff. So there's things that you shouldn't tolerate, but me i was just so calm and so like chill about everything i regret being that way but anyways oh third incident these actually were all in middle school so the third incident also happened in seventh grade this girl i was again brand new a little less new than when i got into the fight but um i was still fairly new and this girl i'm standing on the steps in the morning and I was just talking to my friends minding my business and this girl comes up to me and she's like I don't like you and I was not smart with her or nothing I just said okay because it's like what do people expect from you when they say like they don't like you or they wish bad on you or whatever like okay sis good for you like I don't know what to say like good for you you don't like me cool like can we coexist, you know, because I am i don't know who you are. I didn't even know this girl's name. I didn't know nothing about her. And now that I knew she ain't like me, I definitely didn't give a fuck to know who she was or anything about her. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so those are instances where 
you have to deal with bullying in a way that suits your personality. If you feel like, um, don't be prideful. In today's world, don't be prideful. That was a trait that I picked up from my mother. But don't be prideful. Um, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Speak up when you need help. Speak up when you need somebody to talk to. When you're hurting. When you feel like you don't have nowhere else to turn. That's when you need to voice it the most. Because that's when that suicidal stuff comes in. Is when you just feel like no one is coming to your aid and that's because you've given no one a chance so give yourself a chance give yourself a fighting chance at tackling whatever problem it is that is irking you when it comes to fights with friends classmates your family know that that's temporary that could be healed that could be fixed communicate with your words um I would never condone somebody like hitting on you or anything like that and you using your words. If somebody giving you that energy, give it back to an extent. You can use your words maybe once or twice, but if it continues, then you got to just <coughs> When you're dealing with a significant other that's kind of dangerous and they're putting their hands on you as well. Again, remember that you're not alone. You have a family and even though they may have distanced you from everybody that you love, those people still love you and they haven't forgotten about you. And deep down inside, they probably already know what's going on. They're just waiting for you to come to them. So reach out to people and let people know that you need them and you'd be surprised to see who comes, comes to your aid. Like a bad day doesn't equal a bad life and a lot of things in our human experience are within our power to change if we care enough to do so. So I would just say be very gentle with yourself. Like don't beat yourself up. That's something I have a bad habit of doing is like when I make a mistake, oh my God, the world used to be over. Like it, it filtered over into my work life, my relationships, my personal relations, like friendships and stuff. Like one mistake and I would just implode. Like I remember... Um, telling my, my current boyfriend how in past relationships if like we got into a disagreement or an argument I would just basically feel like the relationship was over at that point because that's really how immature relationships are like they they can't withstand anything so there was that keep going like no matter what just keep going when I was in my dark place four years ago I I don't know what kept me going. I was praying a lot, but I was also crying a lot. That's the most I ever cried in my life. And I feel like maybe the reason, I still have tears. I'm about to sit there and lie and be like, well, maybe the reason I don't cry as much. But no, I still be boohooing. Um, I don't think it's anywhere near as frequent though. Like I was literally crying on a daily basis. Like just crying, 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 grieving, um, loss of friendships, loss of relationship, loss of just so many things all at once, loss of family and just a lot. It was a lot to deal with. And um, I leaned on the people that I had in my arsenal. I leaned on my friends and, you know, tried to focus on the bright side. You have to make a concerted effort to think positively, Think love, think gratitude, think happiness, think like you're happy to be here and eventually you do start to believe it. And when I also say keep going, I know that for, a, I'm 26 now, I know that for a good two or three years of my 20s decade so far were spent in autopilot. And when I say autopilot, I mean my fight to keep myself going was fierce. Like, I'm sitting there crying. Like, I was working at a call center um, back when all this happened. And I would have to log out my phone and, like, go cry and then come back. And, of course, they was asking questions, but I didn't give a f if I got fired or anything. Like, I was just like, I need to get this out. I can't be on the phone crying all day. So, I was like, I cry as many times as I need to. And that's what I'm going to tell you, too. Cry. If you need to cry, cry. Don't let nobody tell you that it's a week because it's not... Uh, crying is a release so cry if you need to cry I know I'm a crybaby at this point and I'm okay with it talk to people you can trust talk to a pet talk to God talk to yourself I talk to myself all the time I used to talk to my dog but he's with my auntie now hi auntie if you ever see this <laughs> affirm yourself okay so tell yourself that you're important that you are lovable that you are 
that you matter that you mean something that you're supposed to be here like tell yourself anything and everything that you need to hear in order for you to believe like until you believe it rather um you're not a mistake regardless of the circumstances in which you came into this world a lot of us could be considered a mistake but you're not a mistake you're supposed to be here and you're meant for a greater purpose and if no one else is telling you that then i'm telling you that let me be the one you're supposed to be here and i need you to discover your purpose because there are other people's blessings that are attached to your purpose stole that from sarah jakes parker or her uh what am i always want to say parker sarah jakes roberts or her husband Teray, but it's true there are people whose whose blessings are um embedded into you or intertwined with yours and so know that once you unlock your next level you're unlocking levels for a bunch of other people too so keep fighting keep fighting avoid victimizing yourself because Although you may be a victim of an action or a circumstance, those are temporary. You are not an overall victim of life. So you're still supposed to be here and you're supposed to do things and avoid just making yourself a victim. Now, in the essence of the word victim and when it comes to things like abuse and rape and things of that nature, you're actually a victim, but it doesn't mean you have to carry on the identity of a victim through your whole life you still have the power to change things moving forward as long as you're alive and living out new days that's a new opportunity to write a brand new chapter of your story and it doesn't mean that those past ones weren't bad or that they were any more or less significant to your story it's just that you have a new day to work with and you should work with what's right in front of you lastly self-care Make sure that you're feeding your soul. And when I say that, I mean whatever makes you happy, do it. If that means that you need to do a little grown and sexy things, go do that. Do it safely, but do that. Um, if that means that you want to take a nature walk, if that means that you um, need to read a book, if you have a happy place out in nature, if you have a happy place in a bookstore, mine actually closed down, so I'm kind of sad about that. But um yeah just find find things that uh wake your spirit up mine was a, and this is another thing about depression it stifles your creativity and it hinders your ability to just like do the things that you used to enjoy so like for me i have not sketched in a couple years i haven't sketched anything really and that thinking about how long i haven't sketched also depressed me <laughs> it was so awful just be gentle with yourself so the goal of what i'm saying today is as far as these isolated incidents um know that situations change know that storms pass know that you know you you and someone may not get along today but you may get along tomorrow and that's okay a bad day does not equal a bad life and this is something that i've had to tell myself so don't think i'm sitting here trying to preach to you um i honestly cringe when people say suicide is selfish because at that moment you're making it about you and that situation probably had nothing to do with you if someone ever you know took themselves out they probably didn't feel strong enough they probably didn't feel like things would end they felt unseen they felt unheard they felt alone they felt dark honestly if you've ever been in that space then you know you know how hard it is to like uh redefine your your perception and your scope on life everything feels like it's caving in on you and it's not gonna go away but i'm here to tell you that it does go away there's going to be times where you just want to check out. However, don't. Hang in there. Know that you have the power to change these situations. A big part of suicide is that you feel powerless. And I want to just tell you to do your best to take your power back. Do your best to remind yourself that almost everything that's within our human experience is in our control. Just don't do it don't go through with it just try your best to work through it talk to people talk to yourself honestly i talk to myself and i talk to god when i get like that because 
this place that I was in four years ago was darker than anything I ever, ever, ever been through and experienced. And something so silly was the breaking point for me. Like, it was weird. It was like we were fighting about like laundry or something to do with like household chores and my little my little uh fragile already fragile mind just was like Fuck it you know what i mean and i took a lot of pills i probably took quadruple the recommended dose and the way i knew that i'm a lot of things have reinforced that I'm supposed to be here even though I don't exactly know why but in this particular instance my grandmother came into my room and um she randomly just started talking to me I don't even I don't even remember what she was talking about to be honest I remembered um and I'm sorry if I cry but um I remembered like feeling really really out of it and like getting drowsy because that's what this medicine does it to kind of put you to sleep while it's fixing any issues that you're having and um she just came in my room and she started talking to me and it was maybe for two hours and um the effects like slowly started to wear off so she was probably in my room for more than two hours because I don't know I don't know what it was it was just like a fight in me to like stay awake and listen to her because honestly I had to I didn't want to be like oh grandma I'm trying to go to sleep you know what I mean I didn't want to do it um it was just the fact that I didn't feel I didn't feel good in that moment and I don't know what effect finding me like that in that state would have had on my family and I would have been really sorry you know and so even if like momentarily it feels like people hate you that's that's okay but you have to love yourself in the times when no one else does like really love yourself hug yourself tell yourself you're beautiful tell yourself everything you need to hear until you start to believe it because the world is like cruel especially now it's like we're getting more um desensitized to violence and cruelty and unkindness and just silly crap so just remind yourself that everything is gonna be okay and remember that the reason that the suicide prevention icon if you will is a semicolon is because the semicolon is a change of direction or a continuation on a thought so keep in mind don't put a period where there should be a semicolon okay keep going Please keep going.